My name is Molly Maupin and I'm a hydrologist with the U.S. Geological Survey in the Water Mission area. And I am the National Water Use Science Team Lead. And over the years, we've used satellite imagery to help us to get a cross the landscape picture of water use. And what the satellite data can help us with is showing how much water is evapotranspired from the landscape. And in the West, that's a really big component of water use because, as you know, it's dry and a lot of water gets evaporated. So that changes across the country, and the Landsat data is really good about giving us a complete picture across the landscape. My name is uh, Gabriel Sanai. I uh, work for USGS Aeros. Um, my title is a research physical scientist. It's the main goal in the water census is how the water is used. So it's usually at the county scale. For each county, they want to know how much water is used for agriculture, how much water is used for thermoelectric plants, which requires for cooling purposes, and how much water is used for industrial water use, how much water is for domestic. So really splitting the water use into major, the water into um, its major uses. For us to be able to take the Landsat product, which is showing the evapotranspiration or the consumptive use of water across the landscape, in order for us to take that and put it into the context of our water use compilations, we focus on irrigation. So we need to discretize out those irrigated lands. We can monitor uh, satellite using satellite data the rainfall variability and how evapotranspiration are happening, which means how much crop is grown in irrigation fields or in rain-fed system. And that can be uh, transferred into alerts, food security alerts, because ET is strongly or linearly co uh, correlated to uh, food production. The more plants transpire, the more likely the more grain is being produced. So ET can be used for drought monitoring purposes but also indirectly we can monitor how much water is being withdrawn uh, from the groundwater. It's a computer model. Uh, it stands for Simplified Surface Energy Balance. And the app uh, is operational. So it start, started out as a Simplified Surface Energy Balance model. And we operationalized it, uh, which means we simplified the modeling uh, parameters, procedures, so we can apply it globally. Gabriel is, is a leader in his field. Um, there's, there's a large body of literature that is showing his algorithms and others because his is, it's easy to understand. It is giving us the type of information we need at a resolution and over a time series that it's helping us a lot. So I think that you know, his work has been extremely valuable. Knowing how much water is uh, being used and, and because it's a demand and supply, so we're gonna match it. Do we have enough water to meet this demand? So knowing the water use will help us, well, maybe the water use in this component is becoming lower, so water will be available on other uses. So it will help you design, or do we need to transfer water from one basin to another? So it will help you, you know, understand, design a system that will meet the demand. So that's the main advantage is just knowing the trends as well. So when you do it over the years, you know, a given water use going up or going down because of uh, population movements and cities growing, maybe water is moving from agriculture to domestic water use. So it's really the, the main question is, do we have enough water for the people and also not only for people, for the ecosystem? Thanks to the Landsat missions and Eros, these very valuable remote sensed satellite images are available and they have a lot of value in the fact that they're regularly measured over the same geographic places on Earth, so you can get this stream of pictures that help us to show uh, what's changing on the landscape 
and often that change on the landscape can be reflected or is part of the driving force of changes in water use.